Welcome to activity 23 where we're going to be looking at the 4017 divide by 10 synchronous counter also known as a decade counter. It's a very important I see as there are questions in the AQA examination on this particular chip. By understanding what it does in this practical hopefully that will allow you to answer those questions. So looking at the pinouts of it we have 10 outputs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So the outputs, 10 of them, are labelled 0 to 9. In addition, we have some extra pins. We have our clock input. So this is going to be where our frequency generator pulse is going to go into. We have a reset pin, RST, and we have an enable pin, EN. These two pins need to generally be held low, but we'll look at what happens when we make them high. And then finally, we've got another output pin, which is pin 12, and it tells us it's an output divided by 10, and we'll look at what's happening there. We also have our power pins, pin 16 and pin 8. Now, to look at those 10 outputs, we're going to put them to LEDs. But to make it easier from a wiring perspective, we're going to be using this. It's called a LED bar graph display, display and in fact there are 10 LEDs within one package so it makes the wiring easy. It quite simply is connected along the top, the anodes, down to the cathodes, negative at the bottom. We'll need current limiting resistors on each of those outputs. We'll get to this later but it tells us that typically it uses 2 volts per LED per segment Maximum of 2.5 for a forward current of 20 milliamps. Okay, so let's have a little look at it. So I've shown you a wiring diagram there, which I've already prepared. And here we have in front of us that circuit. So let's look at what it does. Now, first of all, I'm going to feed a clock into pin 14 and you can see that immediately it starts to pulse and what I've done here I've put an LED on that clock pulse and I've put it through a little buffer because otherwise it would the LED would interfere with the clock pulse signal so you can see the LED coming on and you can see the clock pulse moving the display along so each output 0 1 2 3 4 5 six, seven, eight, nine, back to zero. And as you can see, hopefully, if I just turn that down slightly, it moves on one pulse, not now, but now. So as the clock goes from low to high, every time the LED is coming on, it is moving along one pulse. Now, the most important thing to notice about this is that no two outputs are on at the same time. In other words, when one goes off, the next one comes on. As a quick by the way, if I increase the frequency and I'm going to increase it tenfold using the frequency generator, you can see that the display gets a lot quicker. I'm just going to remove that clock pulse. If I make it even faster, and faster still. And you can see there that the display looks like it's continuously on, but in fact it's flashing too quickly for us to see. So let's go back to our original pulse. And now let's have a little look at what our reset and enable pins do. So they are currently held low. When I press the switch, the output from this reset will go high and immediately you can see that we have reset back to output zero. So it's reset back to the first output. When I release the switch, it continues counting. When I press the switch, it goes back to zero. So our reset pin resets the count back to zero. Let's have a look what happens when I press the enable pin. 
and the count has stopped. So again, when we send a high into the enable pin, our count stops counting. But instead of recessing back to zero, it stops where it is. When I release the enable pin, it jumped a bit then. So I press it, it stops, I release, it continues counting. So the enable is merely pausing the count, whereas the reset is recessing back to zero. Let's have a little look at that output pin divide by 10, as they called it. I'm going to use a logic probe for this. There we go. So we can see that the output pin is going high and low. When is it doing that? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So on output 0 to 4, the output of pin 12 is high. And on counts 5 to 9, the output is low. Let's just do that one more time. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's have a little look at our questions and conclusions. So first of all, we are asked... What is the value of the current limiting resistors needed for the LEDs? Show you're working. Well, we know that our LEDs used up 2 volts with a maximum of 2.5. And that was with a forward current of 20 milliamps. So therefore, we have a 5 volt power supply. We're going to take off, we'll use the 2 value rather than the maximum. Take off the 2 volts across the LED. And we know that voltage divided by current, and we know that the current is 20 milliamps flowing through the LED, equals our resistor value. So therefore we have 3 divided by 20 milliamps. If we use our calculator. So 3 divided by 20 exponent minus 3 milliamps equals 150. So we use a 150 ohm resistor. I've actually used a 220 ohm resistor, which means that, of course, not so much current will flow and therefore the LEDs will be OK and not in danger of blowing up or too much current flowing through them. Explain what is happening in the circuit. Well, let's have a little look at the timing diagram. Here we have our clock pulse. And as the clock pulse goes from low to high, our first output goes high, output zero. As the clock pulse goes from high to low, our output zero remains high. As the clock goes from low to high on the second time, output zero goes off and output one comes on. On the third clock pulse, output one goes off and output 2 comes on, etc. And that follows the same pattern all the way through. As I've already explained, it's very important that you understand that only one output is on at any one time. When we get to when we get to output 9, on the next rising edge of the clock pulse, output 9 goes off and output 0 comes back on. So it's gone along and it's come back on itself. And finally, looking at the output pin 12, which is our divide by 10 output, you can see that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 output is high and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 the output was low that we looked at on the logic probe. So let's remind ourselves what happens when you make the resetter high and what happens when you make the enabler high. Going back to our circuit, at the moment it's counting, we press the reset and it resets back to output zero. And whilst we keep it held high, the count is inhibited or stops. If we release the reset so it goes low again, 
the count will then continue from output 0. And our enable pin is currently low. When we press the enable pin, it stops the count or disenables the count. And we release the enable and the count continues. There seems to be a little skip there has happened before. Stop it. Continue it. So the enable will stop the count happening, but not reset it. This is the end of tutorial 23.